Just under. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Welcome back guys, this is Eric here from Moss Pawn and Gun. Today we're gonna to be talking about a very unique military surplus rifle. This gun is called the Jungmann. It's the AG-42 Model B, uh, basically AG-42B. A Couple of different revisions of the gun, B being probably the most common revision. Very, very, very unique gun. I cannot say that enough. Um, this particular rifle is very modern and elegant, uh, yet it is an older firearm. It replaced the aging Swedish M96 service rifles. Um, it's chambered in 6.5 by 55 millimeter, a very flat shooting uh, Mauser cartridge that uh, is awesome. If you guys have ever shot a sporting gun or any type of Mauser rifle in 6.5 by 55, you really know what I mean. It's a very, uh, a very small round, small bore round, moving very fast, carrying a lot of energy, very flat trajectory, uh, wonderful cartridge. This is a, a unique rifle in that uh, it's one of the first guns I know of that actually used direct gas impingement. This is a direct gas impingement rifle. A lot of people think the AR-15 was the first gun to use direct gas impingement. That's not true, this is the first one. Uh, the Swedes developed this gun Later on, they sold the machinery uh, to the Egyptians, and the Egyptians produced a more simplified version of this gun known as the Hakim. Hakim stands for king, so I guess they considered it the king of rifles. The Hakim was chambered in 8mm Mauser, uh, whereby the original Jungmann's chambered in 65 by 55 um, It's a 10-shot uh, box magazine. The magazine will come out of the gun, although like many rifles uh, of the era that were in this configuration, uh, the magazine was not really intended to be removed from the rifle except to clean the rifle. Um, the, ri uh, the magazine is held in with the tab right here on the bottom that, that hinges forward as well as a little pull tab that you have to squeeze. So you have to push and squeeze to get the mag out. Locks it in very positively. Um, the, the B change that they made to a lot of these guns mainly was the uh, setup of the rear sight was changed slightly from the early models and the uh, actual top cover was changed considerably, adding uh, what is basically like a port buffer on the side to help keep the brass from dinging up the uh, side of the gun and everything. And they added some improved uh, little not notches here uh, for pulling the, pulling the operating slide back. Now, you might have noticed there, this, this rifle's set up very uniquely. Uh, this particular version does not have any sort of an adjustable gas system. Uh, it's meant to run the service cartridge, and that's it whereby the Hakim, you know, the eight millimeter version, that particular gun is designed to have an adjustable gas system for the wide range of surplus ammunition that the Egyptian military was likely going to encounter. Uh, not only that, but the different field conditions, you know, varying uh, degrees of dirty ammo and so forth. Um, I'm gonna show you guys here. Now, I'm gonna show you how this thing operates. Okay, basically, this, ca this carrier gets grabbed by the top cover. You push forward, it grabs it, you draw it to the rear, and that's how you charge the gun. Now, if you guys think that an M1 Garand will pinch the crap out of you, you, you have never seen it like it will pinch you with this Jungmann. Uh, a Hakim, a Rashid, a Jungmann, any of these types of guns that uses this system, if you're not careful, if the weapon is on fire with the lever, rotated to the left here, the gun will pinch the ever-loving crap out of you. I'm talking it will physically harm you. Like, it, it can get down to the bone, guys. Be very careful with these things. The manual of arms is to lock the, lock the carriage. Safety to the right, withdrawn all the way to the rear. Of course, with the magazine being usually in place all the time. Uh, take your stripper clip. You actually have to go from the inside in, rotate down, one stripper clip, two stripper clips. Now, I had a theory about why they did it this way, why it's a rock-in system. 
The reason they use a rock-in system is so that if you're a soldier and you're in a hurry and you're trying to get rounds down range, that the carrier, once allowed to release, will actually throw the stripper clip out of the way like such. Watch. So we're going to go in, rotate in. All right. Now, to load the gun, I would rotate the lever to the left. And what it does is it bumps the carrier forward ever so slightly. To load the gun, simply grab one of these ears or even the port buffer and just pull back slightly. All right, the carrier falls forward, rotates the last clip out of the way, the last stripper clip, and the gun at that point is ready to fire. If the soldier was gonna, you know, take a walk or whatever he's gonna do, put the gun on safe and you're good to go. Now, likewise, if I wanted to unload the gun, I could leave the gun on safe, and let's say I wanted to withdraw around from the chamber. Well, that's as simple as pushing the top cover forward, grabbing the carrier, and pulling back. Okay, that withdrew the round that was in the chamber. Since the gun is on safe, the bolt remains open. If I wanted to reload the gun, or say I wanted to you know, leave the action back, whatever, rotate the lever to the left, pull back slightly, and the gun's ready to fire which uh, we're going to do right now. Pretty simple arrangement. Once you understand uh, the manual of arms, it's a very easy gun to use. And guys, the recoil impulse, spot on. Very smooth gun. All right, we're out. So rotate lever to the right. Make sure the carrier's locked, it is. Stripper clip, one in place. Stripper clip two, in place. Rotate, pull back, and it always kicks that, stripper, that last stripper clip out of the way. Safety on, get our ears on. Hopefully my sight wasn't walking around there. I wasn't connecting there towards the end. Let's try again. Behind the gun, very intuitive. Safety's off, ready to go. Safety towards the firer, ready to go. Safety away from the firer, safety's on. All right, let's try that 300 yard gong again. See if we can connect a bit. Safety on, stripper clip in place, load her up. Not too bad once you get the manual of arms down, these things are ridiculously easy to work. You saw how quick that was. You know, one thing before I shoot again, I, I would be very curious to see how this particular rifle would have stood up against the Garand in combat. Could you imagine fields of soldiers shooting at each other, an M1 Garand being a very, very unique rifle for when it was fielded and who it went up against and what those armies had, you know, what the Germans had and all the other armies we stood up against. Um, the Jungmann, I, I think, would have fared very well against the Garand. Very flat trajectory, very good accuracy. Um, to me, to me, accuracy that is considerably better than any Garand I've ever fired. 
Um, very interesting. And you get 10 rounds magazine capacity, so you've kind of got two up on the Garand there. I don't know, this, uh, this gun, very, very cool. This particular example was made in 1943. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not certain exactly when the Jungmann was developed. It's probably in the early, early 40s. I can't imagine much earlier than that. Um, but a very, very awesome gun. Let's go ahead and shoot a little bit more and then I'm gonna get Chad on it. Uh, he was shooting this thing earlier and he was a pig and slop. So 10 more rounds and I'm gonna get out of the way here. Little gun is shooting real nice. I think uh, what we need to do is move back to the 440 mark with this thing because this 300 yards just ain't doing it. All right, I'm gonna try to pick up the speed here a little bit. Here we go. Oh yeah, guys, I'll tell you what, you can't hit stuff with this gun, there's a problem, because th these things are so insanely accurate. Uh, we're probably not gonna have time to put the gun on paper for you today, uh, but I just wanted to showcase the gun some, and of course, Chad's gonna get behind it here. Um, one thing about the sights I didn't mention earlier. The rear sight's adjustable for elevation. Uh, that's one of the B modifications they made was changing the sight. Uh, there's a little drum over here that as you rotate it, it goes like one, two, three, four, and it's graduated up to 700 meters. So right now we've got it on the 300 meter setting. We're shooting 300 meters. So the gun, I'm literally splitting the bullseye right in half. The ammunition we're using is actually M41 sniper ammunition. So very, very accurate stuff. The gun is shooting two point of aim with the service ammunition, just as it's intended to do. The front sight is adjustable for windage. Very, very simple. All it is is a screw up front, simply adjust it, and that's it. So the gun has its own little sight pusher built in. Um, all in all, pretty awesome, guys. So uh, I'm going to get back from behind this thing, let Chad have a go, and uh, see how he fares. All right, guys. You know as well as I do that I can't let Eric have all the fun with these cool mill serps, and this is one jewel of a military surplus rifle right here. Um, 6.5, just really flat shooting, pretty much anything within range that we're uh, shooting at right now, up to 300 meters. You aim right on it, it's gonna hit it. It's like a little laser beam, this, this cartridge. But anyways, let's load her up. I'm gonna take some shots and see what I can do with this little gem here. Okay, safety off. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna start with the uh, 100 yarder, work my way out, then I'll take some shots at some smaller targets. Yeah, take your time, let's see where you're at at 100. One more. Yep. Two. Uh oh. Short cycled on that one. Two fifty. Yep. Oop. Pull that one off to the right. Yeah, I think. All right, you're favoring on the uh, bottom quadrant of the plate, but you're certainly shooting a good group. I'm uh, aiming a little bit more, uh, lower, like a bullseye. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you should be able to aim right at the target on the top of the hill and okay. hit it no problem. All right, I'll cut it in half then. Yeah, you should be able to just cut it in half. Whenever you're ready. All right, go for three here. Bring your uh, point of aim down a bit. You're uh, actually towards the top of the plate. Okay. I'll just keep the bullseye. Yep.
Low. Yep. Awesome. Why don't Take you go for that little eight inch? Yeah, I think I will. Sitting that eight inch just a little bit earlier. We were getting this thing kind of sided in. Kept hitting the post. See if we can go for the round. Eight inch Magnum Auto Popper at about 300 yards. All right. I did adjust the sight from earlier, so mm -hmm. just try a shot and we'll see where you're at. Yep, I'm just going to do a bullseye. Good. You're on the lower end of it. Okay. Just bring your hold up slightly and you're, you're on the money. All right, you hit just slightly to the left. And guys, that, that post that he just hit on that eight inch popper there is only about three and a half, four inches wide at the bottom where it tapers. That's a very small target to hit with iron sights at 300 yards. Just like that. <laughs> you hit it. Yep. Yep. Just to the right by like an inch. Same spot. Hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Same spot. Just to the right. All of those shots that you fired at that eight inch uh, circle hit near the bottom and all of them fell into about a five inch area, about the size of your fist. That's pretty good. I mean, that target, literally the front side is like this. That target is about this big <laughs> that I'm aiming at. So I think we're gonna move up to the top of the hill and see what this thing can do at 440. And I might take some more shots at a little eight inch and see what we can do. I mean, I don't know. The way this thing is, I mean, I know it's more accurate than we are. It's just limited to what you can see and you know how you, uh, how you take a picture on the sights. But let's move up to the top of the hill and see what we can do. All right, guys, we've moved back to 440 yards uh, with the Jungman here. Uh, this is the longest range I have available here at the property, um, but we've got a 22 inch round, fairly large round, but we're gonna try a few shots at it with iron sights just to kind of get an idea where the gun's hitting for us. Um, eventually, what I'm hoping we'll, we'll be able to do is take this little guy out to maybe about seven or 800 yards and uh, shoot some of these mill serps that we've been reviewing over the years, maybe longer range. Uh, in time, we'll put that together. I'll tell you what, this thing, is a phenomenal shooter. If you ever get a chance to pick up a Jungman, they're a little bit pricey, but uh, you should certainly consider it. They're very, uh, very nice guns. All right, same ammunition, same rifle. Uh, we're just gonna try from bench rest here just to get nice and solid. And I'm just gonna take a few shots here. You ready? Send it. Right in the middle. Good shot. Oh yeah. Just under the plate, Eric. Under it. Yep, just low. Lower quadrant, but good. Just under the plate again. Under it, okay. Yep. Oh yeah. Lower left edge. Same place, just off the lower left edge. Just under it again. Wow, that's surprising. Oh, just under it again. Under it? Huh. Shooting right under the plate. Well, one thing I can say is that this gun really, really, really shoots to point of aim. We're using an original military cartridge uh, that is calibrated for this gun. 
the gas system of this gun is set up and calibrated for the service ammunition. So when you combine all those things together, you get the gun doing exactly what it was intended to do. Um, I'm going to take a few shots at that little 8-inch popper down there. That's an 8-inch circle at 400 yards. Um, actually, 400 meters, but let's see. I'm going to take five on the... I'm going to take five on the big gong just to get my point of aim down again, and then we're going to try five on the little popper. All right. I think I know what I'm doing wrong. I just need to bring my... Need to cut that gong in half, thereabouts. Yep. Yeah, it's more center. Just off the left edge at nine o'clock. Dead center. Dead center. Good. All right. The gun shoots exactly where it's looking. So we've got the front sight looking where we want it to go and everything. We're going to try that little eight inch popper down there, see if we can hit him. And then I've only got five rounds left. So Chad has the same amount of ammunition as me. We're both going to try the same thing, and then we'll see who can hit the 8-inch popper, if we can hit the 8-inch popper out of five rounds for our, our lunch battle. In case uh, you guys don't know, the lunch battle is where we, we have an informal competition to see who has to buy lunch. All right. 8-inch <clears throat> popper. All right, these are my ciders. And then Chad's going to spot for me. You ready? Send it. Man, that is tiny. Oh, yeah. Bitty bitty, it's okay. Oh yeah, you run good, right in the round. Just over the top. Just off the right side. Same place, just off the right. That's a hard little target to hit, man. Oh yeah. It's itty bitty. Did I hit it at all? You hit it once? Hit it once, huh. You've got more shots, right? Uh, no, I actually must have miscounted. Um, so Chad is going to have a go here. Uh, that was all the ammo I've got for my, my 20 up here. Can't say enough good things about this gun, guys. This thing is great. All right, guys, I'm going to ring the 22-inch round at 440 yards and then take a few shots of the 8-inch popper just to get my sights on. And we're going to have our lunch battle on that small 8-inch round. So, oops. Okay. Just 10 shots. Let's see what we can do here. 22-inch round at 440 yards. You got a pretty strong crosswind, but I don't think it's going to really matter at this distance. Uh, probably not too terribly much. Let's see. Where are you holding? Bullseye. Okay, run it. Good. A little low. I you saw I pulled that one. I did pull that one just a little bit. Well centered, though. Low, well centered. Hmm. Bring your point of aim up just a, a hair. Didn't see it. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, you still got rounds? Oh, I sure do. Yeah, I think I uh, short stroked again. Yeah, it does that. All right. Let's not pinch our fingers off here. There we go. 
thought I still had ammo. And some of those rounds may just be a little bit underpowered or whatever the case is. That might be why some of them are hitting kind of low. But yeah, that's a possibility. It is old ammunition. Well, it is M41 sniper ammo. It is. It's shooting uh, certainly as good as that name implies. And we are using iron sights, open sights at that. Take your time. You're good. Oh yeah, that one got in there. Oh yeah. Just off the left side of the plate. I'll tell you what, that ammo is pretty dang consistent for what it is, you know. Well, I'm going to take five more shots at the big gong. And then five shots at the eight inch. And then we're going to have our little competition here. All right. All right. Five more at the yeah, those, uh, the shots that you connected on the plate, you're probably shooting about a four and a half, five inch group in that ballpark. Certainly not bad. Pretty fair for irons. I think so. All Considering right. most Garands were only supposed to be four, uh, capable of four minutes at 100 yards. Yep. Just off the left side of the plate. Okay. Hmm. I didn't see it. I think it might have went low. Good. Short stroke again. Oh, uh, yeah. Right edge of the plate at three o'clock. Low. Hmm. All right, let me see if I can hit that uh, eight inch. All right. Ooh, that thing is itty bitty. It's tiny. Holy moly. Just off the left edge of the plate, but perfect elevation. Good. You slammed it right on the lower quadrant on the skinny part. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah. I don't know where that one went. Man, j just to the right of the skinny part near the bottom, like barely, the wind blew by it. I mean, literally. <laughs> Good. Connected with it on the bottom on the skinny part. Well, cool. Well, that was two out of five there. Well, let's uh, make it official. All right. Well, Eric elected me to go ahead and go first. Got five rounds. This is about all the ammunition we have left. Ten shots. So I'll take my five. And then Eric will take his. All right, eight inch Magnum Popper. Oh boy, it's tiny. Perfectly centered, just over the top by about two inches. That little devil. It's tiny.
Good shot, dead center. Do that again. Right off on the top edge of the plate, good hit. Just over the top, bring your hole down just a hair. Just off the right edge of the plate, barely. So two out of five. Not terrible. Well, let's see how well Eric does for the battle for lunch. All right, guys, I decided to cheat a little bit. I went and I grabbed my Swedish field cap. Got to show my, my love for my Swedish viewers. We're going to try to beat Chad. That's a tough thing. But I have these Swedish gun gods on my side today. In these completely neutral settings. All send right. It when, send it when you're ready. Yep. Boy, that is one itty bitty little gong. It is. So, guys, this is basically what would be the equivalent of a soldier peeking his head out of a trench to have a look and you grabbing your gun and letting him see the error of his mistake. That is a tiny little target. All right. Ready when you are. Send it. Just off the left edge. Slightly high. Good, oh, okay, just a little high. Just on, yeah, about 10 o'clock, right off the edge. Oh yeah, dead center. Just off the right, slightly low. Down in the dirt, but I think it kind of, eh, I think you hit the bottom of it. We'll, we'll call that a hit. Now that bounced up and hit the big gong. <laughs> we know what, what you don't know about this is that I was actually planning some trick shots. You know, I was actually just gonna kind of skim them off the ground and, 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 and one you up there. I think we're gonna have to call that a neutral draw. We'll have to battle for lunch again another day. I think that was just too close to tell. But the bottom line, guys, is that this rifle is amazing. I, I really love Swedish rifles. I've always been a big fan of the M38s, M96s, everything like that. Um, but getting a chance to ha have fun with one of these guns is certainly a treat. If you ever have a chance to shoot one, I would certainly uh, take the opportunity to do it. They are very, very accurate. I would say that they're certainly right on up there with Persian Mausers, K31s, uh, your original Gewehr 98s, very accurate rifles. Um, I just can't say a good, enough good things about surplus, guys. I, I've really always been a surplus nut. And uh, I appreciate you watching our video today. Hopefully it was entertaining and somewhat fun for you to watch. We have many more military surplus rifles on the way to include uh, some more work with the Martini Henry. A lot of you guys have been asking about that. We're going to do more work with our cannon that we picked up recently. Uh, we do have a Hakim. Uh, the, uh, the 8 millimeter version of this gun that we'll be talking about in a future video. And uh, guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.